Aloha Hawaii. It's time for the Vein Clinics of Hawaii radio show. Their team's approach to diagnosing problems and developing solutions and treatment plans are beyond compare. So let's get started with your host of the show, Mike Buck, and medical director, Dr. Randall Julith of the Vein Clinics of Hawaii. Well, aloha and welcome, everybody. Once again, I'm Mike Buck, and you're listening to Vein Centers of Hawaii on the air. Uh, we love this uh, new show. We hope that you're getting a lot of benefit out of it. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rand- Randall Julef is the proprietor, is the owner. We'll talk about that. I, I don't like calling proprietor owner. We'll-, we'll give him another name in a minute. But he's certainly the founder and co-founder of a business to, to get your in-, in good shape vascularly. This actually started on the Big Island. And in the last eight years, it's grown from the Big Island uh, to uh, to the to Maui, Kauai, and here on Oahu. And so, uh, Dr. Julius spends his time uh, getting lots of air miles going between uh, all of these wonderful places. Right now, we're here so we can put together this show. And um, first of all, it's nice to see you again, Doc. And, and second of all, um, I don't want to call you the, the the boss guy, the you know the the the. the the go-to guy, but this is this was your dream completed, and I know you started out with with some associates, and it ended up that you did this, and now, uh, my goodness, it's, it's it's exponentially improved based on, uh, I guess, not only your success as a practitioner, but the need for the services that you provide here in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, venous disease. In- wait, wait, wait. So, what are we going to call you? We oh. uh, we boss, we founder, we chairman of the board, we the CEO, or or, or we're the uh, jack of all trades, master of none, yeah. except surgery. Yeah, we know that you're a master of surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, when I when I sign documents, I usually uh, say medical director. Medical director. I like that. Okay, yeah. good. That's it. Medical director. Um, I think what happens is, and before we get this is by the way part two, gang. If you weren't with us last week, you're gonna have to figure out a way to catch up. Uh, we'll go through a little bit about it, but there's basically. It's pretty recognized after a long bunch of studies that there are six different classes of venous disease. Last week we talked about the first three. This week we're talking about the second three. So class number four is where, gonna, where, we, where we are going to be at. And I think that one of the things that I find important is developing a relationship with a doctor or with an office. So when somebody comes in and kicks some tires... They need to see smiling faces. They need to see a, a level of comfort. And you certainly have, I haven't had a chance to see your neighbor island clinics, but I certainly have had a chance to look at this one. And it's a, it's a, it's a warm place. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. the people that I saw waiting while we were waiting to chat with you, um, nobody was looking nervous and biting their fingernails and thinking, oh, I don't, I don't think I want to be here. Yeah. So that, that must be a big part of what you do, your people. Well, we try, we try to keep yeah. things very comfortable yeah. because it, uh, it, and that's important, um, not only from a trust standpoint, mm. you know, the people have to trust their doctor, yeah. you know, yeah. um, but, uh, but also since we do procedures mm. in, in the office and most people know that that's kind of where they're heading, mm. you know, they're, they're there to have, uh, uh, ultimately some type of procedure to make things better, um, you know, we, you, you have to keep things very comfortable and uh, pleasant, and and we do we do we go through a lot to try to make that happen for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, with respect to the discomfort that might you know may or may, sure. may not be involved, uh, and, and you know sometimes there's a little bit of discomfort. Everybody is a little different. I think um, you're lucky though. I think you're lucky because a lot of your patients, it's the first time they've had a treatment. They come in because of a symptom. Everybody starts going to the dentist when they're a little kid. Oh, yeah. So every year they have an experience that they may not enjoy too much. Yeah. So that must be, I, you know, every, and we, I do a, a great show with uh, Dr. Russell Mastronaga here. He's a great dentist. And he says, there are people that they, three weeks before their dental appointment start getting nervous. Yeah. You know, they just, yeah. But, but I think that once they see a practice, and more importantly to me than the, the I mean, your staff, they're, they're on, they're just wonderful. I hardly just meeting them, knowing they're great people. But I, I saw a couple of people sitting there reading magazines actually looking like they were comfortable. Yeah. That, that must be comforting to you. Oh, that, yeah. That yeah. Your, yeah. Your patient wants to get help. Right. Yeah. Well, again, we, we, we try to do a lot to try to keep it comfortable for them and as pain-free as we possibly can. I mean, nothing is pain, absolutely pain-free, but we try to keep it very, very minimal. As a matter of fact, speaking of dentists, um, we do, uh, we use a lot of yeah. local anesthesia, mm-hmm. same thing as a dentist, mm-hmm. you know, when you but, go to- By the way, I got to jump in here because I know something and I hope we're leading to this. Uh, you've got a dental, a, a dental friend that comes here from the mainland to get his veins treated. 
Uh, no, he's or, or, or another doctor, a, a different kind of doctor. Is another physician. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. a physician. Yeah, that that's a, a show of faith. Yeah, but I mean, but that doesn't mean if you're a dentist and you're listening to the show online somewhere, come on over. He'll take care. Of you. <laughs> yeah, we'll treat. But, but, but we'll treat dentists too. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was, that, that I was getting that. Um, so I'm glad it's not correct, and I'll remember that. Uh, but but I do think it is significant, and and I guess there are some tire kickers. Some people shop around. I know that mm-hmm. I would. Mm-hmm. If I, if I, you know, everybody thinks, well, my guy's the best guy in the world. How many guys have just him? You know what? Is he really? I mean, shouldn't you do a little bit of searching around every now and then? Sure. Yeah. 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 We, we, we invite people to come in. Um, yeah. and, uh, a, a lot of people will say, oh boy, my, uh, my brother-in-law needs to be here or mm-hmm. you know, my sister's got terrible yeah. problems. And, uh, and I tell them, Hey, they need to come in. We yeah. can talk to them. Uh, we're not going to tie them down and, yeah, and yeah. make any, make them do anything they don't want to. Uh, they just need to come in and talk, and we can show them what we've uh, got. You know. that, that's why I think it's wonderful, gang. When we started talking last week, and believe me, we will have shows in the future to deal with what we dealt with last week as well. This week, we're dealing with the other three categories. And one of the things that I think causes immediate recognition by loved ones and everybody else, and maybe the patient himself doesn't do it, and that is when the skin starts getting changed. So I want to know how the skin and the veins and the venous system are related. You know, why does the skin do some change based on maybe bad veins? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, we're we're going into yeah C four, which mm-hmm. is the fourth level of um, you know the categorization of of uh, venous disease. I saw that and, word hype, hyper uh, pigmentation. Yes. That means a lot, or or it's, it's there's something going on. It's not normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the darkening of the skin yeah, yeah, that you yeah. were referring to there. But, um, and, and this is the level where uh, we really we really start to get very very concerned about the patient's you know venous well being because mm-hmm. now it's starting to uh, create uh, problems. Well, now it's starting to create destruction. Mm-hmm. Of normal tissue, which is the up skin. until yeah. yeah, up until now it hasn't. I mean, we last week we went through the three th- three initial categories: spider veins one, uh, varicose veins two, swelling three, and with, in those categories, um, yeah, they've got plenty. Of, people can have plenty of venous insufficiency, plenty of symptoms, plenty of concern to mm-hmm. correct the problem, but during those three uh, classes, they're not g- having again destruction. Um, but yeah, when we talk about uh, C4, we, we talk about the, the skin starting to change. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And how does it change? Well, the first thing that happens and uh, is what you just stated, mm-hmm. hyperpigmentation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, just walking around Walmart, for God's mm-hmm. sake. Um, you can just see the the. the, the I, I'm telling you, I, it's like a heat-seeking missile for me. I see it all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's there's many many people mm-hmm. out there that have uh, that uh, hyperpigmentation mm-hmm. uh, of the lower leg, probably due to a, a vein issue, um, but they don't know it. I, I know people that go fishing uh, with long pants on. And shoes and socks, yeah, because they 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 it's so apparent to them. And I'm I'm hoping that what we're going to do today is somebody's going to look down at their legs, or their or mom is going to tell daddy, you know what they're talking about you. This is the, and so I'm 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 in some respects thinking that it may be good that this happens because if mm-hmm. it didn't, you might have things going on in there that it's too late to fix them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that and that happens. Uh, patients will come in. Uh, to the office and see us, and we have uh, diagrams and pictures of all the the, the levels. If of- this was our TV version, you could see the pictures that Doc gave me, and I'm looking at myself here in C4, which happens to be the, the, <laughs> the one, one that we're talking, the one we're about, talking about. Yeah, yeah but you know, I think that the quicker somebody finds out. Once again, I want to, what we talked about a little bit last week is that I would find, and I am going to find, a level of comfort knowing where I am because there's a clear path of treatment. Once you can, once you can say you're at this level, these are the treatments that you can do. Sure, that's a, yeah. that's comforting. Yeah, well, it's recognizing, you know, recognizing a problem mm-hmm. that you can now define. The patient yeah. can now define the problem and and uh, be comforted by the fact that gee. Yeah, even though I know now that I have yeah. a problem, at least I know I can do something about it. But what I was going to say before is we have these pictures up, you know, mm-hmm. showing the different levels of, uh, of vein disease. And all the time, 
patients are coming in and maybe they have their own problems, but they're, they're pointing at these pictures and they're saying, oh, gee, you know, my father looks just like that. Or, you yeah. know, my uh, mother-in-law lo- yeah, looks or, just or like Or, that. honey, you look just like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, hyperpigmentation. When we, when we start talking about skin changes in uh, venous disease, uh, hyperpigmentation is uh, one of the first things that starts. Um, and then another thing on the same level, uh, and there's a couple of different levels within, you know, this category, but we won't get too technical, but, uh, hyperpigmentation and people can all actually start to get kind of a rashy change mm-hmm. to their skin. And we, we call that venous eczema. Yeah. I, I, you know, I just, I just heard that term for the first time through you mm-hmm. and, and, and I was thinking to myself, okay, you put the two words together, um, and it, there's another word that's going to come up in a little bit called ulcer, and people have predetermined ideas of what an ulcer is, yeah. and that's not what we're talking about. It's, it's not a, a stomach ulcer. It's, it's a, lot, a lot different. It's not a peptic stomach ulcer. Yeah. It's a puka, sure. for want of a better right, expression. Right. It just doesn't want to seem to go away for whatever its reason. So I'm guessing once again and reiterating – if you're listening to the program or your husband is out working on his his car, his boat, uh, or, or your wife is out, uh, you know, with the grandkids on a shopping thing, if they've got this in many respects, you can almost say thank goodness because – this isn't a normal thing. It, there's something that causes this. Now, that doesn't always mean, does it, Doc, that it's venous insufficiency. There Not can be always. other things. Yeah. But it certainly is an indicator. Yeah, uh, an indicator yeah. of that possibility. Yeah. And, it, and it commonly is. You mm-hmm. know, it commonly yeah. is part of the, mm-hmm. the, the bigger picture of venous insufficiency. But, yeah, there are yeah. other things yeah. that cause that, definitely. Um, so uh, so that, that's the first level of this, of this uh, category of, uh, you know, uh, C4. Mm-hmm. Um, as the, as the, it gets even worse, and, and again, this is part of the reason that we have this classification system, so that we know, you know, where people are and what degree of disease they have mm-hmm. and how urgent there is, we need to be with uh, treatment, et cetera. But yep. uh, the next level of skin changes that we see are, are something called lipodermatosclerosis. Oh boy, another big long one for me. Okay, it means, <laughs> hype, okay, wait a minute. I got I got this, let me see if I can do this. Um, no, I can't. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I, I, but I will. I, 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 But I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna practice it over, over the next uh, week and then we'll do it in the next show. But, okay. but it is lipodermatosclerosis. Sclerosis. Dermato. Dermatosclerosis. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the, the skin, again, the, the initial stage is it starts to darken. Um, some people, not everybody, has this, a reddish kind of rash mm-hmm. that can occur. And, again, that's that eczema kind of looking yeah. thing. Um, but then as the, as the skin tissue becomes more, more and more damaged, it becomes thicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think yeah. uh, last week you said something about leathery looking skin. Yeah, exactly. That's what I've got this picture, gang. That's what it looks like. It looks like uh, this is a bandage on the guy's foot. I mean, yeah. it looks like it's not even skin. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that's lipodermatosclerosis mm-hmm. when it beca- when the skin becomes thickened, and the skin itself is actually yeah. edematous. You know, the mm-hmm. the skin itself is getting swollen. Uh, he's got a lot of excess fluid in it. Um, and then there's something called a, uh, atrophy blanche. So you can practice that. One. Yeah, no, I, I actually, I think I got that one. It's uh, egg, egg, a, um, atrophy blanche. Atrophy blanche. Atrophy blanche, blanche okay. Yeah. Um, and then that just, That's uh, why we hired the doc, you know. He's the medical director. Yeah. He, he's going to flash these things at you. But at least now you got a leg up. You, you know, you're going to know what we're talking about when you get in there. Yeah. yeah. So in that, that's just a, a whitish, you know, sometimes. And you, you, yeah. you'll you you see it in these I pictures. I see it in this one picture, uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's kind of a whitish, scarry looking area of, the, of this, uh, you know, in, inflamed, edematous thickened leathery kind yeah. of skin so we're really heading into a danger zone there there mm. should be danger lights yeah, yeah. going off when we see these people now why does that happen you might ask yeah i, I need to know and by the way one of the things i learned in a previous show and we're going to cover this again is that you can sometimes reverse the cause of this thing not getting any better but from what doc said in the past and we'll find out why maybe some of the skin is kind of permanently damaged 
and that you, the ability for it to keep new skin from inside is gone so that you, you shouldn't expect that all traces of this discoloration or this thickening of the skin is going to disappear. Yeah, no, it yeah. doesn't, yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, and that's the, the first, per, uh, the first uh, question everybody asks. Yeah, you know, when they, I did. When, yeah, they, yeah. when they come Dang. in you know, <laughs> and, they, and they have discolored skin and, and we treat them and they say, oh, is, you know, how long is it going to take for this to go away? And I have to say, unfortunately, probably not. I got another one. And that is, and I think it's an excuse that I used. Once again, your kids or your grandkids are the best ones. They say, what's that, Papa? Well, I, I got sunburned. Yeah. You know, I mean, oh, I had sunburn. When right. you see your feet or your legs are red, yeah. they're just sunburn. Right. Um, when you're a little kid, you hardly ever get, if ever, sunburn feet unless you're lying down. So that means that if, you, if you're, ra- I rationalized. I thought oh, it's just sure. too much sun. It yeah. wasn't. It yeah. wasn't that. Well, that's the other thing. A lot yeah. of it, most people think it's either diabetes yeah. or, or sun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you have to say, well, the rest of your leg was probably exposed to the sun also. Yeah, why yeah, is why that isn't not, it right? Yeah. You, know. you know, there's one more thing, too, and, I, and I, I'm not sure that this is a big part and parcel of it. But I do know that, you know, sometimes you'll have uh, a skin that is, is like maybe itchy and dry. And there's, you know, you may, may or not be out allergic to something, but is that, is that a symptom of maybe your veins trying to tell you something from inside as well? Absolutely. Itching. Yeah, it, yeah, itchy, uh, it, itching and burning mm-hmm. can definitely be a symptom yeah, yeah. of venous insufficiency in general. Certainly when you get to the C4 level, yes, mm-hmm. because uh, then you have all these, uh, you know, rashy kind of changes that are going on too, so uh, even more so. Yeah, I, you know, and, and I guess what you're going to do is you're going to talk about the, the, the way to get in there and treat things. It seems to me that some of those, the, the picture of the leg that I saw, there's not really a way to get in there from right there, or is there? I mean, do you actually have to open up that skin? Do you, how do you see behind it to fix the veins that are obviously right near it? Well, most of the time, it has to do with the function of the veins that are actually further up the leg. Okay. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah it, so you're and ultrasounding it's, up there. You can see it. Pretty yeah, it, and it's it's a it's the same problem that we've been talking. It's kind mm. of a you know recurring theme mm, yeah. of each of these levels. It has to do with uh, you know vein failure mm-hmm. of some veins. Um, and that's always or usually a problem of uh, valvular failure, but there can be also obstructive kind of reasons why mm-hmm. blood doesn't move through veins the way that it should. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's a backup of blood, or uh, which creates uh, abnormal flow, so the blood is now going down when it should be going up, mm-hmm. um, and it's creating uh, an increase in pressure, and and that's the root. Prob- of the uh, pr- root problem of the cause of uh, skin changes is, is this thing that we call venous hypertension. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is it sometimes that outer layer of skin that sometimes actually gets deeper that just can't, can't swell up anymore? It just, you, you, the swelling is so big because I'm thinking, you know, if, and some of you, many of you out there have water retention issues and, and take, uh, you know, well, shishi pills or diuretics or whatever you take. Um, and, and sometimes it provides pretty much of a relief. But I'm wondering if maybe some of that swelling is, is it just fluids that have collected at the bottom of your feet that are no longer able to get uphill like they're supposed to? They're just collecting down there. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but there's, a, there's a difference between the, you know, generalized swelling of a leg. Mm-hmm. And the swelling or edema that we're talking about within the skin itself, yeah. and the um, the skin is really you know, we in in medicine we talk about end organ mm-hmm. you know, failure, yeah. Um, and uh, you know the the skin is um, is the end organ that's being impacted by um, this abnormal vein function. Mm-hmm. And the, you know, the, the venous system is like a, a root of a tree. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the main vein is the trunk. Yeah. And then uh, coming off of that trunk, then below is this whole complex of, you know, of tiny little things that go out, you know, way in, yeah. in the periphery. And the, the root system uh, furthest away from the trunk, those are the, those are the little veins and venules mm-hmm. and capillaries in the skin. Gotcha. If you can yeah, kind of picture yeah. that. Now, yeah, as a matter of fact, you love the skin you're in. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Oh, I yeah. Mean, and, and then some, one, another thing begs the question. I've seen this in, in myself 
where one leg is not as bad as the other, or Mm -hmm. maybe one leg isn't bad at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that if there's somebody out there right now and they're looking at this leathery skin on one leg, Mm -hmm. they really do have an issue. Oh, yeah. Because otherwise it would have been equally distributed, I guess. Yeah, yes and no. Mm-hmm. Actually, um, now there are there are other specific reasons mm-hmm. why somebody may have a lot of symptoms yeah, on one yeah. leg and like nothing on the other. Well, I mean, a couple we shows uh, we, we talked a couple shows about a guy that yeah. that didn't have any valves in one leg. Right, right. You know, so obviously that leg was full of nightmare, and the other leg was perfectly, perfectly normal. normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and there are you know a variety of different yeah. things that might cause mm-hmm. that. Uh, but in general, um, you know, for run-of-the-mill you know, venous insufficiency, again, because it's a genetic problem, mm-hmm. your genes are affecting both legs. And uh, so the problem is often mm-hmm. seen in both legs. But it's not uncommon for people to come in with one leg yeah. clinically looking a lot worse than the other. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, and, and why that happens, I, I'm not quite sure. But... Basically, it, it one leg seems to be further along in the timeline of the whole process. Yeah, yeah. You know, the 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 uh, the problem with venous insufficiency is it it's a progressive sort of problem. It just mm-hmm. keeps going. You know, it gets uh, it gets worse with time if you don't treat it. Uh, you can treat it and still have other problems in the future. Um, so it's not something that we ever cure completely. Uh, but very often, one you know, one uh, in any one patient, one leg may look a lot worse than the other. And again, why that is, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, okay, and that's a wake up call because I want to tell you. Also, I know, and we've I've I've actually learned this before from some other things that we did shows that we did a long time ago about ears and about nose and about eyes and about teeth. Uh, that, that it's quite common in our business, for instance. After wearing a headset for 50 years, I'm I'm pretty much deaf in one ear. And so I, I have to wear a hearing aid in one ear, but my other is better than normal. You know, Some people have one eye that's really good and one eye that's really bad. Yeah. So it, it seems to me that this is perfect time to introduce the fact that some of you folks out there, if you've got a discolored bottom lower leg, that you've got one leg that's worse than the other. And it is probably crying out to you somehow. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a sign. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah. a sign of a problem. And uh, you may not have it in, you may not have the same sign in mm-hmm. both legs. Uh, but uh, there's a problem there somewhere, and it needs to be evaluated. Okay, so what we're going to do is point you at the website. And if anything that you've been hearing today, you need more clarification, you need to call the experts, you need to go online, you need to go to uh, 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 veinclinicsofhawaii.com, veinclinicsofhawaii.com, because we're on four islands. I'm not going to give you all the phone numbers, but you can find them real easy at going to veinclinicsofhawaii.com. And, and, and I want to tell you, there's, it's a well-beaten path. Uh, since Doc's been in business, uh, he's got thousands and thousands of happy patients. And I think that the quicker you find out, and he's not trolling for, for new clients here. He's, he's, he's trying to make people aware of some of the things that you can do to be involved in your health before it becomes a big problem where you have what we're going to talk about the next step. And this is something called a heated ulcer. And that sounds scary. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your opportunity. To, okay. So a heated ulcer. I was uh, asking you a while ago. Everybody that hears, oh yeah, Dad's got a big pressure job. He's got terrible ulcers. Well, yeah, it, it's true. But there's what is an ulcer anyway? Well, an ulcer is uh, a breakdown of the skin, a, t- a complete breakdown of the skin integrity. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's you know, typically it's a, a loss of skin yeah. in an area, and it's going down in the subcutaneous tissue. Um, and, uh, you know, that the ulcers in general, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's not like a stomach ulcer. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like a stomach ulcer, but, um, uh, on the surface. Pepto-Bismol might help but, with stomach ulcer, but it might, might not help when you have in your leg. No, it ain't yeah, going to yeah, work yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. but, um, yeah, the, in, in, it's just, it's a sign of, uh, getting back to the classification here, um, you know, C4, that goes untreated, and um, as that process gets worse mm-hmm. and worse with time, uh, you know, as uh, the, the the process of this venous insufficiency creating abnormal pressure in mm-hmm. the skin, um, and uh, the skin becoming more edematous, and you know, the molecules are leaking out of mm-hmm. the uh, capillaries and creating inflammation and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, at some point, then it becomes uh, an issue where it really does destroy skin, mm-hmm. and that skin then can't heal. Okay, so as that comes closer and closer to the surface, at some point in time, is there a breakthrough? 
and somebody says, "Oh, I must have banged my leg." Yeah, put a bandaid on it. Well, and then yeah. that in that happens yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm some, yeah. sometimes uh, people are there. <clears throat> people are there at C four, mm-hmm. and they uh, you know they uh, bump their leg against the coffee table, yeah. Yeah. breaks the skin, and that skin doesn't heal. Mm-hmm. It turns, you know, it, 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 as, as a matter of fact, it doesn't heal, but it, it actually gets worse with time. And then, then yeah. it becomes an ulcer. Um, but uh, we're, we're sort of going from C4 to C6, and that sometimes oh, happens. No, got, yeah, but, it does it. Yeah, I was going to guess that it does it. Yeah. Um, but uh, C5 is healed ulcer. Mm-hmm. Um, and what does that mean? Well, that means that the patient, you know, went at some point went from C4. Mm-hmm up to C6, which is an active ulcer, mm-hmm. and not, and that got healed for one reason or another. Are some people luckier than others, doctor, uh, that, that they they do heal? In other words, they got that ulcer, they did get the hole, but instead of staying open for weeks or months, or sometimes you said even years, it, uh, something, something neat happened, it healed. Yeah, sometimes it can heal. Yeah. Sometimes it can heal, um, you know, by itself, just because of, or, or uh, you know, as a result of their home remedies, you know. Um, sometimes uh, people go to wound care clinics, for mm-hmm. instance, um, and uh, wound care clinics are great places. They, mm-hmm. they, they, uh, they get he- ulcers healed and, yeah. you know, other types of things. Um, but sometimes the underlying problem is not fully addressed, and by that I mean, you know, if it's a vein issue, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and if if the underlying vein issue isn't addressed, then invariably I was going to say, isn't that, isn't that rascal coming back? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Maybe um, now there's one more thing too, because this is radio, folks. Uh, vein clinics of Hawaii, you can actually see some of this stuff there. There's a lot of videos. There's a lot of things to see. A lot of pamphlets. But I, I want to make sure that you understand when you say an ulcer. It's it's a wound. It's a sore. And what I am amazed at is how big some of them are. So let's talk about that. How you know? I mean, if they're as big as round as a dime, is it a big problem? What if they're as big as round as a silver dollar? Or what if it's as big as round as the bottom of a, a, a soda bottle? That's a pretty big hole in the leg. Yeah. Um, well, in in actually, you know, the, some of the some of these ulcers can get even bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. many of the, some of these ulcers can get can cover most uh i saw one that was almost a ring around the whole leg yeah yeah yeah, much of the lower leg i mean it's really it's uh it's amazing how bad they can become um but uh yeah so the um some people will develop these you know major skin changes and for whatever reason develops develop an ulcer and some of them will go on to mm-hmm. heal. And yeah. so you get a false sense of security I there. Say, yeah. Thank because, goodness I dodged the bullet there. Yeah, I'm okay. because yeah. It, uh, but, but the, the ulcer healed and uh, you know, the, the patient is feeling confident that things are over, mm-hmm. but they're not. Yeah. And um, so, uh, but invariably, and the natural progression or the natural history of venous ulceration is even if it does heal, for whatever reason, mm. off very often it's going to recur. Yeah, let me let me ask good. you this one. Here's one that I think that a lot of people out there are probably thinking at the same time. Okay, um, I'm thinking, I, and I learned, and you you we, we learned when we were first starting to get to know each other that I've had one of these, and for a long time, and I think many of us and many people that are listening have these things that they are treating almost numb about it. They just know that it's still there, so they put maybe some over-the-counter antibacterial stuff on it, and they think, well, it's clean, I scrub it, I, I take all of this, this, the funnies away from it, I put on the bacitracin or neosporin or whatever, and I bandage that sucker up, and it doesn't heal. Right. And it hasn't healed for a year. <clears throat> but some of these people, it's even longer than that, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's shocking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, that's true. They, yeah. they come into the, uh, the office, and uh, they've been, doing, they've been yeah. doing the same thing yeah. For definition of years. insanity, really, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but yeah. they but they don't know any better. Yeah. You know, yeah. they they don't know that there's an they uh, therein lies the problem. Mm-hmm. They don't know that there's an underlying mm-hmm. cause for this ulcer. They just think that the ulcer is the is the thing is the main problem, but it's not. You know, it's what, an expression of the problem. What about um, the the possibility that you have this ulcer? 
and, and then it gets infected. I mean, you know, it, we put ourselves through a lot of stuff. You, you might think it's nice and bandaged up all the time, and then you're out working in the yard, and you get some dirt in it, or you get who knows what in it. Uh, can that lead to bigger problems? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, it can. Um, they can become infected, and, um, you know, usually it's not uh, the infection part of it mm-hmm. can be treated with antibiotics and, uh, you know, uh, care of the wound itself. Uh, but antibiotics you know, on the other hand, are not going to, going to get the thing healed. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to require uh, treatment of the underlying problem. Uh, you know, I, I know that there, there are a lot of, we are, we are basically an instant gratification society. We want something done right now. Sounds to me like some of the work doing with people that have an ulcer, um, especially the lower leg ulcer, they're going to have to be schooled and look, we're going to be very aggressive with this, but you really have to be a part of this. And this can take a long time. It took a long time to come. It's not going to go away overnight. Right, yeah. right. That's hard for me to swallow because I want it done now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and the um, you know, and the treatment is, is often not all that mm, convenient yeah. for the patient. Mm, yeah. um, the, you know, the, the main reason why, um, the, uh, the, because of the skin changes and uh, ulcer formation and the non-healing of the ulcer, et cetera, uh, the main reason for that, again, is the swelling mm-hmm. or the edema yeah. in the skin. Um, and that's what has yeah. to be addressed. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, that, that edema in the skin comes from uh, what we call venous hypertension, this constant downward mm-hmm. flow and pressure because of the failing of the, of the larger of your, veins. Of your veins and your legs higher, and the valves. Higher yeah. in the yeah. leg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it it happens down around the ankles and feet because that's where the greatest amount of pressure is. It's like the old Johnny Cash song, "The End of the Line." That's, yeah. that's where it all yeah, ends up. Exactly. Right? Yeah. exactly. Okay. Now, I, and I, I can tell you another thing. Um, and at every single program, it's because I'm a firm believer in this. And Dr. Julif and I have talked about this a, a, a lot off the air. Is I firmly believe that almost all of us can get some help from wearing compression um, uh, garments or socks. And, and I know that in Hawaii, it's something that you don't like talking about because it's sometimes hot and humid and these things can be a pain in the leg, so to speak. But in actual fact, my question is, I know that it's not the cure-all, fix-all for everything, but how often is compression used in treatment of an ulcer? All the time. Ah, see, there's, that's, there's, so, and why is that? Yeah, well, Once it, again, it's counterintuitive. Why, if I squeeze something, would yeah. it make it worse? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, you know, I've never thought about that, but yeah, yeah it is counterintuitive. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm glad you asked that question yeah. because that was my, that was going to be my next comment. But um, how do we treat the edema in the skin? Mm-hmm. You know, how do we get rid of that? Well, uh, you know, we can we can manipulate their veins and do all the things that we do with respect to their venous insufficiency, but but still we need to do something more. I mean, invariably, yeah. people come in with an ulcer uh, and these you know uh, terrible skin changes. Mm-hmm. We have to address that immediately. Mm-hmm. And the way that we do that is with one form of compression or another. Now. Uh, you know all about compression stockings. I do. I, I swear by them, not at them. I used to swear at them. <laughs> yeah. Because, but now it's part of my day. Yeah. The only thing, I got to tell you something funny. One of our dogs thinks it's playtime. When I get my shoes and my socks, and he just does not want to let me, and, and I, look gang, I use these things, and uh, Dr. Julif can tell you why these are great. They're like scrub gloves. And they have little knobbies on them. And that makes it easier for me to, you know, get the, that stock, that compression garment on nice and smooth. The minute I reach, and they're green. And the minute I reach for them, that dog starts barking and yelling. He's like, he, he thinks I'm putting them on so we can have fun. Play. So I end up putting them out in the yard so I can get my socks on. Yeah. But, but you know, I think it's, it's, it's a habit for them. But once again, I think people need to be told mechanically how, how that helps. Yeah. Well, it it helps because of the fact that the compression is relieving that swelling, the edema, not mm-hmm. not only in the entire leg itself, which it is, yeah. but more specifically the swelling inside the skin, which is the problem. That's what uh-huh. that's what the problem is with the skin changes. You know, you can have a lot of swelling in your leg mm-hmm. for for whatever reason and not develop these kind of you know yeah. dr- dramatic skin problems you know the these dramatic skin problems occur because the the swelling has gotten so bad yeah. and the pressure etc uh that it has uh, you know been transmitted into the skin itself so we have to we have to do something to get rid of that that swelling in that and decompress 
you know, yeah, the you skin know, compartment. I just thought of something, and I do have this discoloration uh, in both legs, worse, worse than one than the other. I'm being treated. I'm going to be okay. Uh, but I, I just wondered sometimes, how come it's not black feet? Because th- that's the bottom of the pile. My feet are fine. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I might have a few little, uh, you know, um, spider veins on my feet and the, my inside of my ankles, the gator or whatever they call it. But the black stuff's further up. How come? Yeah. It, it, just, if it was below, I could just cover it up with shoes. Nobody'd see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a, that's the vanity. Well, well that that yeah. that, uh, that hypertensive uh, you know uh, yeah. problem with mm-hmm. the skin uh, for, for anatomic and yeah. probably muscular yeah. and activity kind of reasons that doesn't happen in your feet. Uh, okay, you know, yeah. it's being your feet uh, function a little better with respect to that. Um, but yeah, we we use uh, we use compression, mm-hmm. and, and there's a variety of different devices mm-hmm. that you can use to uh, create compression. Yeah. Uh, stockings are the most common mm-hmm. one. Um, and, and yeah, you're right. Nobody, most people swear yeah. at their stockings. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah. likes them. Um, but when you get to this point, you, it's mandatory. Mm-hmm. You have to do something. Yeah. Now, uh, in addition to stockings, however, we often uh, start people on a, uh, a medicated wrap. Mm-hmm. Um, do they do that at home? Do they wear it all the time? No, they wear it all the time, mm-hmm. and that's what that's why it becomes a little inconvenient yeah. sometimes. But it's just something that you have to get through mm-hmm. in order to get these things healed. But um, there are various medicated wraps mm-hmm. and uh, the things that you can apply to the ulcer and and uh, that sort of thing. But but the main thing mm-hmm. is some form of compression that's going to yeah. relieve the uh, edema and the swelling in the skin. Um, and, uh, so, you know, one of the, one of the things that we use are, is something called an unaboot. Mm-hmm. A unaboot. Unaboot. Made U- in Switzerland. U-N-N-A. Yeah. Uh, it's made somewhere. It made somewhere, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unaboot. And that's, it's not, it's not a boot at all, mm-hmm. but it's a medicated wrap. Um, but we put it on and, and the patient keeps it mm-hmm. on. Yeah. 24-7. And then they come back to the office a couple times a week, and we yeah. change that out for them. Ah, okay, I get it. And uh, and that's that's one of the you know basic you know most basic sort of immediate uh, uh, treatment things that you can do to try to get the these ulcers healed and the skin to start changing and becoming more healthy. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel for that? I mean, I know that most people say, "Ooh, but this thing is terrible." I, I, and, you yeah. know, I can't go out. Here. But yes, you can, and and you know. I must give credit right here, right now. Those of you that know people right now, I've seen a few people uh, here in Kalihi where our offices are. I also know a guy that I see out at the in the Kahala Mall area and some other places, other guys, and mostly guys, and but but now some women that I've seen too that are wearing these things. And you got to give them credit for it because they are out in the public doing the thing and they're just saying, you know what, I don't care. I'm going to go do what I want to do, yeah. but I'm going to wear this thing because the doc told me I needed to. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. You, you see that periodically, yeah. 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 Um, at least they feel th- or they understand the worthwhileness mm-hmm. yeah. of, of wearing compression. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the, the immediate thing mm-hmm. is to put them in some sort of compression. And it's almost better that they can't do it at home mm-hmm. because they, they know. Then they won't. That, yeah, they won't take it off <laughs> and leave it looking, off. I'm going to go. I'm going to build. A, I, my wife will every now and again say, uh, you want to do this? Ah, no, I think I'm going to go on the mountain for a while. My, the mountain is elevate the legs. Yeah, and okay. I know a lot of people probably have, and those of you out there that do this, I mean, good that you're doing something, it, and, and it certainly does help, and especially if you raise those legs so they're high enough, you know, above your heart so you can actually get that gravity. But that's not going to fix you, you know. The minute you get up, whatever caused that swelling, yeah. to come right back again. Right, right, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. and you can't, yeah. you can't spend yeah. your entire life with your feet yeah, above yeah, your head. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so so we immediately get them into something like that, mm. and and it's amazing really how quickly uh using that you know that particular wrap mm-hmm. uh, or a wrap of that type can make yeah. how quickly it can make things better it really is yeah. very amazing and that's before you even do anything else to fix the you know the uh the venous problem the venous yeah. functional problem okay now w- when we first met i told you that i had an experience a few years ago where i had a a severe a trauma a, a wound to my leg and it just didn't heal. And it, it turns out uh, that after I was examined, that the wound uh, that was outside was also right on the other side of that wound was a, a really bad varicose vein. And they, it was the perfect storm. Those two things met up with each other. How often does trauma start the ulcer process for people? 
probably fairly commonly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, so if you're even, out there doing that, you know, um, it's not going to heal. Yeah. You, know, you think it's going to yeah. heal, it's not. After, yeah. it, in other words, isn't there medically, uh, uh, say, a length of time that you can give people right now that maybe you're dealing with this and maybe they're dealing with it for uh, two weeks and they think they're seeing some improvement? Uh, maybe they're going to heal. But if, if it goes for how long before you say, you know what, it's, it's not going to heal. You need, you need to get some help with this. Yeah, I think the time is going to vary. But mm-hmm. what if, if tissue is healing in a normal fashion, mm-hmm. what you should see is a gradual improvement over time. Right. And when, uh, when somebody injures their leg and if they have, you know, venous issues mm-hmm. that are going, going to lead to this sort of scenario, it's not going to, he- it's uh-huh. not going to continually improve. Mm-hmm. It's going to either, um, you know, get to a place and sort of uh, give, come to a standstill yeah. or mm-hmm. it's going to get worse with time, you know, mm-hmm. that type of thing. Okay, now let's go back to this this trauma incident where somebody gets hit. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the minute you puncture your skin or this big blunt force trauma, whatever you want to call it, blood starts flying out of there. At what point in time is that blood actually coming from the vein too? Well, probably. Probably you all, all of it. Yeah, yeah always. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because the you know the veins are, um, especially if you have you know vein mm-hmm. issues, uh, the veins in the lower part of the leg are going to be dilated and yeah. uh, you know superficial, and so yeah, you're going to you're going to injure veins, and that's going to create some bleeding, which <laughs> um, you know can be problematic. Um, and as we've talked yeah. about, sometimes people just spontaneously bleed because of the yeah. vein problems in the lower. And, and by the way, that, that leads, here comes another one of these, the dumb announcer questions. Um, we have these two systems. Well, we have a lot of systems, but the two ones that we're talking about here are veins and arteries. And if I puncture a vein or spindle a vein, when I get hit with blunt force, what about an artery? I mean, you know, this artery is bringing blood down. That means if you cut that, it's just going to keep pumping out of that hole. How does that stop? Um, usually with a suture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so but yeah, that yeah, puppy up and yeah, put but, a tourniquet on her to do something. Well, the the good part about uh, I I think the the point here is that um, the good part about venous bleeding mm-hmm. is that typically it's going to stop mm-hmm. uh, if you elevate whatever part yeah, of your yeah, body yeah, that yeah. is is bleeding, and you put a little pressure on it, you know. Uh, now, an artery? Mm-hmm. No, it may not. Mm-hmm. I mean, just elevating your leg, it, you know, if you cut a major artery. Yeah, it's it, still going to pump, yeah, right? It, yeah, it, it yeah. Is, yeah, it's yeah. going to, the, the pressure, uh, you know, the pressure in arteries in general are are much higher, mm-hmm. obviously, than veins. So, uh, so yeah, it takes a, a lot more to control arterial bleeding. Um, how does one, I mean, you know, we're going to wander around a little bit because when you talked, you said something earlier, it was spontaneous bleeding. When you bleed, Um is that most likely a vein rather than an artery? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, so don't try to rationalize. Oh, yeah. You know, it's it's it'll stop. I'll just put a little a little thing about it. Yeah. Turn well, it. Yeah, yeah. the the good part is that you 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 can get it you can get it stopped. You can put pressure and yeah. elevate the you know the extremity yeah. if it's your leg, um, but that doesn't mean that just because it, kind of like an ulcer yeah. Yeah. that doesn't mean that just because the bleeding stopped everything's okay. That's that's a okay, sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, sure. Uh, here, here's another one. And when you talk, when somebody comes in, now this is if you go to veinclinicsofhawaii.com, you're not going to see a big leg ulcer hitting you in the eye. Uh, but you are going to be able to find out about these things because I think that some people come to the office, like we talked about in earlier shows and earlier today, as a matter of fact, uh, for cosmetic reasons and just because they've got some little symptom. This is the big league stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, this is this is really stuff that needs. So I'm guessing that most people want to be explained, and the first time they see that thing that you're going to put on the leg, they might say, "Oh, doc, I can't do that." Say, "Yes, you can, because it's for this period of time." Mm-hmm. Here's the, here's what we can expect if you let us be aggressive to help you here. Right, right. Uh, well, yeah, and, and getting back to our you know classification system, yeah, um, ulceration, uh, like we said, skin mm-hmm. changes and ulceration. That's we're getting into the danger zone. Yeah. So we have to be a little more uh, proactive, a little more aggressive in our treatment so that yeah. you know, we can turn things around. And, and a lot of people don't want, you know, the, the more aggressive type things that we have to yeah. recommend. But, uh, you know, here again, we have to be a little more aggressive mm-hmm. in our explanation and encouragement 
for them to comply with those types of things so that they will yeah. heal. You know, I'm glad you said that because somebody was telling me the other day, um, who, and they broke their wrist, and they didn't get a cast put on their wrist. What they have was is this thing that's underneath and a wrap. And it, it really is a, I, I think the, it was called a stress fracture. It wasn't a real big deal, uh, but it is nonetheless needed to be immobile. But it gave the patient the ability to, Relax a little bit. Maybe if you get home, you get in bed, you put it up on a pillow. Maybe the pressure, which is great to help healing, but you want to relieve it for a while, you can't do that. When you get a cast on, you can't. What if you a cast goes over an ulcer? In other words, there's an ulcer as part of this guy's leg wound. We didn't know it was going to be an ulcer, but now all of a sudden he's healing a break, but there's something else going on in there too. When, did, when, when do you find that out? When you take the cast off? <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's a bad yeah. problem. Yeah, that's a bad problem. I don't need, I, you know, I, and the, I'm not going to be, you know, make the analogy of these bad problems. But I think what really needs to be done is that that people have hope. You know, if they go to vainclinicsofwhy.com and they they feel warm and fuzzy, or they they're in, they're interested in something, there's one section uh, on the website uh, uh, that that I want you to take a look at, and it says. Um, uh, about different if different ways you can check out different videos. And it's not just the sculpting uh, and some other body stuff that gets on there, which you can see. But I think that the more people learn, the more likely they are to feel like, hey, I, I feel part of this. You know, I'm going to be able to, to, to help steer this, this boat of mine through the river and get myself healed up. So when you see that gosh awful looking equipment that you're going to put on, on somebody, you, you, that – Part of that must be the bedside manner. I I know it looks like terrible, but this is going to fix you. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah, and that that's that's the bottom line right there is you have to, um, you know, convince people that it's it's worth the additional effort because, uh, you know, their their situation otherwise is mm-hmm. not going in the right direction, mm-hmm. and it could and it can get worse and become you know even you know bad. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I mean, we're not, I don't I certainly and and look. There's a good percentage that we can discuss. Uh, Dr. Julep has been in this business a long time. He knows what's going on in this. And these conditions that we're talking about right now are among the people with venous conditions, the the, the minor group. Not everybody's heading down that road, right? Not everybody's trying to make an ulcer. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody with varicose veins is ultimately going to get to this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's probably just, you know, 10, 10, 20% of people mm-hmm. with venous insufficiency that goes on for a long time and is untreated yeah. that will actually get to this point. So luckily, yeah, yeah luckily yeah. it's the minority of people who get to these upper uh, classifications. In the very beginning, what we talked about is, and this is, it, this is as you know, part two of two shows. If you missed last week, we'll figure out a way to do it again. But we talk, we're talking about the six classes of venous disease. The first one was the spider veins, which everybody wants to know about. Then we talked about varicose veins. Then swelling, which is the edema. Now we went to skin changes on this program. Now a uh, uh, healed ulcer, and now the ulcers. So, but, but the pathway to these things, if you, if you get more serious about getting it treated, must be at least... Very comforting for a patient to find out, okay, where do I stand with all of your other patients? You know, am I at this end or am I, am I right in the middle? Can I, can I be treated really quickly? Can I be confident about it? And, and is the insurance company going to take care of me? Right. You know? Yeah. That's a lot of questions people need to get answered, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, good questions. Mm-hmm. You know, important yeah. questions. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, just about uh, so so many people come in, no matter how bad their situation yeah. is. I mean, it could be very minor yeah. uh, up to very bad. But uh, so many people come in and say, uh, oh, is this the worst you've ever seen? You oh, know? yeah, yeah. So, yeah but, I guess maybe some people would say, I want to be the worst case you've ever had. I want to yeah, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> don't, don't don't ever say to somebody that doesn't want to know that, that this is the worst I've ever seen. Exactly. Said. And that there's another thing, and I, I know it's kind of funny, but it, it, since we're talking about this and everything else, that sometimes people end up in an ER. I know that there's a lot of training that staff and medical staff go through to not be talking about a patient that's lying there. You know, because the guy can probably hear you pretty well. Oh, and yeah. if you say, oh, this, I don't, I don't know if we can fix this guy or not. This guy's a big problem. Yeah. You may have those thoughts, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't you, probably You shouldn't that. verbalize, no. But, but what about when people tell you, okay, doc, I found my way to your clinic. I've, I've had some tests. We're talking about my treatment. Uh, tell, me the, tell me the truth. What do I do? What's my fault? And, and what can I do to, to be active in this? And am I going to get healed? Mm-hmm. And what's, what's the scenario? What's, what's how, not, 
necessarily how much is it, but how long is it going to take? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it can be a little bit of a process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, by the time we work through it all. Um, but uh, hopefully they feel that it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that anything, I mean, sometimes people go to a, a hair salon and they get their hair cut and it was 40 bucks and it's worth it because they look better. But I think what we're talking about here is, and once again, I want to reiterate, a lot of our listeners, a lot of you all out there, you might say, well, what do I care? I'm retired. You know, I, I can handle this thing. These veins, that's no big deal. I put my legs up, have another glass of vodka at night. No, no, the pain goes away. I think that you, you, you're you creating a, a pathway where people can, instead of accept that they've deteriorated, is if not stop it or reverse it, at least at least handle it, at least get back out and find out what they can do with these diseases. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so many people, like we've, we've said before, they come in with symptoms that they think are just a natural part of aging or, or whatever, mm-hmm. and they feel like they're, they're destined. My turn. Yeah, yeah destined my, my, to be like that. That's what mama had. And, I, I got it. And for the rest of their life. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that we can give them a tremendous amount of encouragement when we're able to, again, define the problem and uh, figure out a treatment plan that is going to make them feel better. One of the things that Dr. Julep and I discussed in the very beginning of getting the, this program together to start you know, enlightening you as to what's, what's out there is to really be able to be frank and be honest and be, uh, because this disease is one that sneaks up a little, it takes a little bit longer, but we are aging and we are living a lot longer than we used to be. And some people may have put up with this, but then they might be 60 and they're going to die in a year or two. Now, if we, the other areas of medicine that you know a lot of your pals uh, specialize in, they keep it. You, you're going to be 95. You're going to be 100. Yeah, absolutely. But what about those? If you don't do something about those veins, those last 10 or 15 years aren't going to be much fun. No, yeah. it would be horrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I want to end it with saying, uh, because I know people are asking, we talked about compression stockings before. This is the time of the year where people are doing traveling. Please give somebody a little hint about why they really should pay attention uh, to their legs and to their veins while they travel. Yeah, Uh, yeah, DVT or deep venous thrombosis, uh, blood clots in the veins, uh, different names for it, but um, yeah, it's a danger for everybody Mm -hmm. just to one extent or another. Um, people who have venous insufficiency are even at a, a little Higher risk. greater yeah, risk. Sure. Um, but yeah, if you're traveling, if you're on a plane, if you're on a long car ride, if you're going to be, you know, not very active, then the thing to do is to get some compression yeah. stockings and wear them on the plane. Um, and, uh, you know, the other, the other two things that you need to think about while you're on a long, you know, long, uh, journey like that is to, uh, you know, wear your, wear your stockings, get up and walk, yeah. even though the uh, cabin attendants don't want you to anymore. Yeah, no, it, it used to say, feel free to move about the cabin. Now they yeah. say, don't you get up. Stay in your seat. Keep that seatbelt buckled at all times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but, but what about the, feet, the foot pump? That's what yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. L- little like yeah. leg exercises, absolutely, yeah. you know, while you're sitting down. And uh, maintain hydration. Mm. Uh, uh, preferably without vodka. I was going to say maybe the right hydration. The right type of Fewer hydration. Fewer martinis, more Perrier's or whatever. Yeah. But but here's the other thing. What if somebody does think that they're going to Chicago, they're going to go to some expo in Chicago. They're in Chicago and they have symptoms that they've never had before. Um, and most, don't most people just shrug their shoulders and say, ah, uh, you know, I'll go see the doctor when I get home. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a mistake. Yeah. yeah. If you have anything, uh, any symptom that is concerning you, uh, you know about especially about yeah. your leg yeah. after you've been on a long trip it, and this happens yeah. all the time people will uh you know will wait till they get home or they mm-hmm. ignore it for a while but uh yeah any uh, especially associated yeah. with any trip or journey that you're on a plane or whatever for yeah. a long period of time if you've got a symptom like that you got to look into it Makes because, some because it can yeah. be fatal Whoa, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the way we're going to cap this one. Glad you could spend some time with us. We're going to take care of you. Go to uh, veinclinicsofhawaii.com, veinclinicsofhawaii.com for doc, Dr. Andrew Jewell, if I'm Mike Buck. Thanks for being here. See you next time. Well, that's our program for today, and we certainly hope you enjoyed meeting us. Please come back next week for our next episode. And in the meanwhile, to learn more, please visit our interactive website, veinclinicsofhawaii.com. That's veinclinicsofhawaii.com.